Hey guys, I want to welcome you back for another week in the book of John. And I'm going to grab my Bible real quick here. Um, and we're going to jump into the book of John. Um, first John, sorry, not John. First John. And uh, we are in the end of chapter 4, the beginning of chapter 5. And uh, so I'm just going to start off by reading... Uh, from, from verse 17 in chapter 4, and we're really, verse 16, but we're really kind of rehashing last week. Remember, we know that God is love because Jesus existed from the beginning. And so when we testify to the truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who came from heaven to us, and He is literally God, that says something about what we believe about Him, but it also says something about what we believe about God. That He existed in a love relationship with, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit from the beginning. And now that love is being experienced by us through Christ. And now we can live in and reveal or show that love to others that they too will believe in Him. And so it, it goes on to say right here, um, I'm going to just read from... Verse 16, we know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows perfect, more perfect. So we will not be afraid of the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Meaning we know that on that day we don't have to fear meeting God because we know that he's already alive in us and we can see that through his love in our life. Um, and it goes on to say, such love has no fear because perfect fear expel, or perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. We love each other because He loved us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a uh, Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. For if we do not love people, we cannot see how, how can we love God. And so if we, sorry. If we don't love people that we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their Christian brother or sister. That, that love that's alive in us that we're experiencing, we make sure that other people experience it through us. And uh, that way his love will continue to uh, go towards others and they will come back into relationship with him. But then we get in verse 5 here, or chapter 5, and uh, it says, Everyone who believes that, that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey His commandments. Loving God means keeping His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. And now here's an important part. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win the victory or the battle against the world or who can overcome this world, your, your version may say, only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now we're going to pick up and read a little bit more in just a minute. But first I wanted to just remind you guys of, of something as we get started. But those two verses are going to be our main theme today. That who really overcomes the world? It's those who live by faith that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God, okay? And so I want to just plant a mental picture in your head to start off with. Uh, the first thing is this. I want you to think of a, a uh, uh, professional wrestling, you know, professional wrestler. Uh, I hope I'm not blowing anything for you, but professional wrestling is fixed. The WWF, all that stuff, it's fixed. Um, there's already a fix in. Before the fight starts, they already know which wrestler is going to win. But they make the fight look good throughout the process, and he still has to go through the battle of the fight. He still gets, you know, knocked off the ropes, dropped on his head, possibly cut. He, he can possibly even get hurt in the process. 
but he knows that when the end result comes, he will be the victor or the overcomer. And that's exactly what this word tells us, that those of us who live in the love of Christ and we experience that love through faith in belief that Jesus is the Son of God, um, we have something now that lives in us that already lets us know that we have his victory or we have overcome the world system. Okay. Now, way back in the day, um, in the 60s, with the, um, the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, he had this, this main saying that really took off. People would sing this, um, but they, say, they used to sing, We will overcome, or we shall overcome, is the song they would sing in the streets as they would do their marches. We shall overcome. And, you know, many, many different groups throughout history have kind of taken that up, and they still sing that today as kind of their marching song, that they will overcome whatever is trying to suppress them or hold them down or hold them back. But when Martin Luther King started this and, and started that saying, he wasn't the originator of it. And these other groups that have kind of picked up from him and they use that same saying... They think that they picked that up from him, but the truth is, he picked that up from God. He picked that up from, from Jesus uh, through the book of John, the original you know, Gospels of John. In John 16.33, it says, In this world you will have trouble. Okay, In this world you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, he says, for I have overcome the world, is what he tells them. Jesus says, hey, don't worry about it when you face troubles inside this world because I have overcome or prevailed or overpowered this world. And what Jesus is letting us know is because we have him in our life, because we've believed in him and put our trust in him, we can be an overcomer. The Bible tells us we were meant to be an overcomer and we have we are able to overcome by our faith in Him. And so the key that we need to understand, though, is anytime we have to overcome anything, that means there's something there that has to be overcome. And that thing is, is the world system, the, the way of the world, uh, the devil and his schemes in the world. The Bible says that he is the prince of this air, the prince of the world, that he schemes against God and he manipulates the truth of God on this world, in this world to try to deceive man. And we who have understanding and we believe and we've experienced the love of Christ, we put our faith and trust in Jesus and therefore it gives us the ability then to be able to overcome the world system. It means the world system that's trying to, to drag us down or, or oppress us or hold us down or hold us back doesn't have the power to do that anymore in Christ. We read in 1 John, uh, there's those verses we just read, and it says, Who is it then that overcomes in verse 5? It is he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. See, overcoming the world um, or the world order, or the world system, it means that when we put our faith in Jesus and the work he has done on the cross, and we have believed in his truth, then we have understanding over the way of the world. And he who has overcome or overpowered the world has given us victory. So that world system, or that thing trying to hold us down in this life, doesn't get the say-so over us anymore. And that's a great thing to know. It's it's in a sports realm. Um, it's like when somebody, you're trying to drive to the basket and do a layup. And as I'm driving to the basket and getting ready to, to explode off the ground and do a layup, somebody who is guarding me is is holding me down or, or using his arms to come down across my arms so that I can't get the ball to the basket. And we understand that that's, that's a foul or a penalty. It's a foul in basketball. Um, holding in football. If I'm trying to get to your quarterback and make a tackle and your lineman holds me back 
and tries to suppress my attack on the quarterback, then he's holding, that's a penalty. And so here's the thing. Jesus is like that referee that steps in on our behalf and says, hey, you were doing what was right, and you're trying to do what was right, and I'm not going to allow that defender or that opposer to suppress the right thing. And so I'm going to overturn what just happened in that play. And, and I'm going to call the penalty or call the foul, and you are going to get rewarded for what you should have done. So at that, that moment, then, I am the victor or the overcomer. I get the foul shots because of that foul, or I get the 10-yard penalty because of that hold. And so the referee has acted on our behalf to overturn that or overcome it so that we get the victory. And that's exactly what, what it tells us about Jesus in this portion of Scripture. We look also back there uh, in chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. It says, If someone says, I love God, but hates Christian brothers or sisters, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people, we can't see, it says, then how can we love God who we cannot see. So there's this God that we say we're in love with and he lives in our lives and, and we're his, yet we don't end up seeing the victory in our own life. We don't see his work excelling within our lives. We don't see uh, his, his, that fellowship with him producing the win. And so if we are, are in fellowship with him, if I'm in fellowship with the referee on that play, he overturns the call and I get the victory on that play because I was with him in the right and that oppressor was in the wrong against me. And that's, that's what this, this verse kind of lets us know. And then you go on and in uh, chapter 5, verse 4, which we read earlier, it says, For every child of God defeats or overcomes this world and we achieve this victory through our faith. So it's the, the one specific tool or, or thing that we have that really brings us the victory is our faith. That faith is what produces victory in us. Um, and you can experience that victory over Satan trying to hold you back uh, by believing or trusting in the love of Christ and the work of Christ in your life. And so what we're doing is, is we learn throughout life that I'm going to go through life leaning on the power of Christ uh, to lift me above the world system. Okay, Now, there's two analogies I guess I'll use. Um, James Harden in the NBA is a master at leaning on the referee for calls. He actually makes moves and has even made up the way he moves in such a way as to draw offenses or fouls from others, and he relies on the referee to see that and call those penalties so that, that he gets the extra opportunities for victory in each of those, those, those battles one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And so he's made a way that by leaning on the referee, it excels him to another level as a player. The, the same is true, we could say, as somebody like in, in track. You have a, a, a high jumper. A high jumper is a guy who, who literally sprints on his own speed, gets to the, the crossbar, and by his own power, he you know, pushes himself up off the ground and tries to, to move over the bar on his own power. By his own speed and his own strength of jump, he tries to exceed the bar and make that. Now, a great you know, high jumper may get eight, eight feet, you know, ten feet maybe. Um, good high jumpers are in there. You look, though, at a pole vaulter. A pole vaulter does the same thing. They run towards this bar that has been lifted in front of them. They run with that bar, but then they don't 
just rely on their own power or explosion from the ground, but then they also use this, this pole that they, they drive into the, you know, the, the place there in front of the mat. And when they do, they bend that pole and, and get that bolt pole to flex enough that then when they use the spring of the pole, it then kind of propels them over the top and, and onto the mat so that they can exceed the height they need to. Now, when you get to pole vaulters, pole vaulters can go 18 feet, 19 feet, you know, 20 feet high because they are leaning on the power of the pole as well as their speed and strength. And so they have something else that's coming alongside them that propels them to victory. And that's what we're doing with Christ is we are leaning on, by faith, by trust, we're leaning on His love for us, we're leaning on His work for us to help us to, to propel us or lift us above the, the work of the world or the work of the devil trying to hold us down. I know that I don't have the power alone and the strength alone to overcome. However, I do believe that with my life and his life put together, and when I lean on his work and trust in his work in my life, he has what it takes for me to start to live above the world system or above the ways of the devil. And so it's important for us to learn to lean on the power of Christ. And you look, and in Revelations chapter 12, verse 11, um, the same John who's writing John, the book of John 16, that says in the world you'll have trouble, but he's the overcomer. He's overcome the world Jesus has. Um, and now he's writing 1 John saying, hey, when you lean by faith on him, on his love and his work for you, he can propel you, lift you, he can make you the victor or the overcomer. And uh, he tells us in Revelations 12, 11, that one day they, meaning believers, they will overcome him, meaning the devil, by his blood, Jesus' blood, and the testimony and the confession of their faith. So because they confess that they believe in Jesus and they believe in the work he did on the cross, they, that's the testimony they give. That, hey, I cannot do it and I cannot propel myself to victory. I cannot lift myself to victory. But I lean on the one who can. And because I've leaned on the one who can, he has already given me victory. So I am already an overcomer. Now, I understand that I'm an overcomer, but just like that wrestler from the beginning, we said the, the fix, the fight was already fixed from the beginning. Well, the fight's already been fixed with us also. We're in a battle against the world system, against the ways of the devil in this life. But he's saying, listen, even though you still have to go through the battle those who believe in me, those who lean on me, those who testify, your testimony is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being the Son of God. Jesus is the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the sent one. And because I believe in that and put my faith and trust in that, because I lean on his love for me, he has already made me an overcomer. So I know there's something to be overcome in this world, and that is the, the system of the world, the way of the world, the devil and his work in this world that's trying to suppress me and hold me down. I understand that that's what I'm in battle with, but I don't worry about it. And, and I may have to go through some tough times inside the ring. I may get banged up a little bit inside the ring, but I already know when this match is over in this life, I am the prevailer, the victor. The, the overcomer, I'm the winner in this. And so that's what we read here in uh, 1 John 5, and I'm going to read the, the end here, 6 through 12. And it says, And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by His baptism in water and by shedding His blood on the cross, not by water alone, 
but by water and blood. And the Spirit, who is truth, confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses. And this is the same thing he tells us there in Revelations. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And all three agree. What do they agree on? That Jesus has the power to overcome. That Jesus did the work to overcome. That Jesus is the one who, when we put our faith and trust in him, he has already given us the victory. And it says this in here. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe greater testimony that comes from God. And God has testified about his son. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who do not believe this are actually calling God a liar because they do not believe what God has testified about His Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life. He's given us victory. He's given us the, the prevailing power, it says. And this life is in His Son. So whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. And so if you want to know if you're going to be an overcomer, not only in this life, but, but eternally, if you're going to be a winner in the end, all you got to do is ask yourself, what's your testimony about Jesus Christ? What do you really believe? What do you trust with your life? Do you believe in the testimony of God's Word towards the Son? Do you believe in the work of the Son? Do you believe in the blood that was shed for you? And do you believe in the Spirit's testimony within your heart? That Jesus is the Christ, He is the Son of God, and He has already done the work. And when you put your trust on Him, and when you lean on Him, He will thrust you to victory over the systems of the world. Okay? It's good, good news, and it's a great thing for us to remember. Okay? So let's learn to live in the love or by faith. Let us live trusting in Jesus so that we can overcome the ways of this world. All right, let's pray. Father God, we just love you. We thank you so much for your testimony. We thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for sending your son, for loving us enough to send your son. That he supplied the victory. He provided the victory by overcoming the devil and sin on the cross and through the grave. Lord, we thank you for the victory that we already possess in him, the eternal life we have in Christ. Let us learn to fight each and every battle each day against the system of the world, leaning and trusting on the one who has already prevailed so that we too might know for sure that we will have victory. We will prevail. We are overcomers in Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.